Hey, welcome back. Today I want to take you through a little tour and demonstration of this sucker, pun intended, and um, basically I just want to show you the features, show you how I made it. I have a DIY light sensor here to tell me when the bin is full. Have a nice big large capacity 20 gallon barrel underneath. Super Dust Deputy 4 inch. I'm trying to keep this as short as possible because this is going to live over by my clamps. So everything was designed to try to make it as short as possible. I picked up this used one horsepower PowerTech uh, motor for it for 90 bucks, so that was nice. Using an air filter that would be for a big caterpillar, it's a little bit shorter and a little bit wider than the one on my main dust collector. It was also cheaper, so that's good. I'll put a link in the description to this filter. I was extremely happy with this filter. I have an easy twist off bucket on the bottom. So I'll show you how I attach that. Around this side, I'm really sick and tired of being down on my hands and knees to uh, vacuum stuff up. So I invested in this nice Rockler vacuum, dust right vacuum. And then um, I got the set that also has the one for doing the bench. And I'll give you a demonstration of how all of that works. I just used a four inch extra port that I had. And that makes for a nice ability to store this right here. Um, it's all just 2x4 construction and all just items that I had around the shop. So um, I really, really, really wish I would have done this a long time ago because I can tell how amazingly convenient this is going to be and how quick it's going to make shop cleanup time. So I hope you enjoy this process. So once I gathered all of my materials, it took a lot of work to figure out what my best configuration was going to be. Um, I used the bottom of my Harbor Freight dust collector that I took apart for my main unit, um, and that worked out really well, but you could just use a plywood base as well. I was trying to keep this as short as possible, so I really had to consider if I wanted to put the motor right on top of the dust deputy, or if I wanted to hang it in a wall mount position like it normally would be, and have the filter straight out of it, and then have a conduit in between the two. Um, and the difference really ended up being negligible, and that would have been a lot more difficult to try to um, get it hung that way. So it was much easier to actually just put it on top. I bolted some 2x4s to the base so that I'd have a nice sturdy surface to be able to build around. Next I just played around to figure out what the height needed to be uh, for these 2x4s and then I just secured them with deck screws. At the end of the video I'll make a mess in my shop and then clean it up so we can do a little experiment on how well this works. I will also include timestamps down below so that if you want to skip straight ahead to just like the um, dust sensor, you can do that or you know skip around to whatever meets your needs. Next I added the casters because from this point on most of this is going to now be taking place from the ground, not on my assembly table. I ran 2x4s across the top and then I actually ran a 1x4 as well on top of that and then just angled that because I just thought it would look a little bit nicer. Um, and I thought that that would add a little bit of added stability since that heavy motor is going to be sitting on these 2x4s. Next I cut the opening for the Super Dust Deputy, and this does not have to be a pretty circle at all, so I just marked out a few spots from the center that were 7 inches out and then just cut around very roughly. Then you just want to get all of the bolts in and make sure you put that weather stripping underneath, just follow the instructions. For the main box, I'm just using some 3 8 inch scrap um, cabinet actually sides, so I'm just painting them, pre-painting them because it's going to be easier than when it's all put together. If you see that gray cabinet unit on the upper right part of your screen, I got all of those doors really cheap at a reclaim store and I happen to have a few spares and one of them is going to be the perfect width for, width for this and it just needed to be a little bit taller. So that's why I'm actually making the main box a little bit taller and running the dust deputy down through it so that I can just use that door that matches the rest of my shop. Here I'm using a PVC pipe to find um, the center point between the two pieces of 2x4 and then I just mark out a circle that's approximately 7 inches wide and then I'm going to cut this in half and cut the two circles, two halves of the circle out so that I can put this in around the dust deputy. I removed the wall hanging bracket just so that there was one less thing sticking out. 
Now I'm going to add some trim to this because why not? It's just made out of some two by fours angled at the top at a 45 um, and it just makes it look a little bit nicer. I'm using reclaimed hinges that I got at Restore and they're about 25 cents a piece there. The door and the paint aren't a perfect match, but it's just paint that I happen to have laying around. So for any things that I make for my shop, I usually just try to always use materials that I already have. My closest big box store sells um, duct collars in either 4 inch or 6 inch, not in 5 inch, and that's the size that I need. So I'm going to use a 6 inch collar and then I'm going to use a 6-5 reducer in order to make the 5 inch hose that's going to come off the filter side of the motor fit right into the filter. I used a shop built circle cutting jig to cut the circle for the bottom, but this does not have to be a beautiful circle, so you can just draw out a circle and cut it by hand, that would be just fine. The bucket is a two gallon uh, gamma lid bucket that I picked up at Winco, a local store near me, but you can get these at Tractor Supply Company or online as well. Um, and they seal, you know, because you could put food in them, so they get an airtight seal. And so I'm basically just going to cut out the triangles so that the lid keeps some rigidity, but also the dust can fall down into the bucket. Next, I just cut openings in the wood as well. I applied a bead of sealant between where the wood and the lid are going to be. And then I applied several screws to hold these together. I left the factory seal on the filter and then I just used inch and a quarter coarse pocket hole screws and screwed to the outside of the seal and it worked very well. I used the leftover weather stripping from the dust deputy and just decided to put it around this seam and then I used uh, foil tape to make sure that everything would stay airtight. I still had the dust bag filter clamp also from my old Harbor Freight unit but it was going to be way too wide to just go around this filter so I cut it in half and then overlapped it and then drilled two holes and screwed it into the back of the unit so that I could actually lift the filter up a couple of inches so that I'd be able to get that bucket out from underneath. So once I got a good hold on that filter, it place nicely with this. Fortunately, I still had some five inch tube from the previous dust collector that I did, so I didn't have to purchase that. So the next step was to put together the vacuum and figure out where I wanted all of the accessories to go. This dust collector sensor idea came from Carlos Alvarez's channel and I will put a link to his video in the description. He clearly knows what he's doing. I do not. I am not an electrician. Please do any of this at your own risk. Um, and so I just kind of followed his instructions with my lights. The wiring diagram ended up needing to be just a little bit different. And this is the exact same configuration that I used for my main dust collection system. And I've had that dust collection system going for years now. I've emptied the barrel dozens of times and the sensor has been perfect every time. This is a red light, green light system. His system kind of had a big like strobe alarm light. I don't want to be distracted when this goes off. I want to just be aware. So I just want to be notified, especially because I'm going to be using this for my bandsaw as well. So I don't want something flashing out of the corner of my eye and, you know, cause an injury. So uh, I just chose to go with two small LED lights. I like that there's a green light too and not just a red light because this lets you know that it is working. Otherwise you could, you know, go months and not really realize that it wasn't functioning and then you're clogging up your filter. While I'm working in the background, I will show you this is exactly the wiring scheme that ended up working for me. And um, again, I make no guarantees about this. I had a wall wart that I happened to have for the first one that I did and it worked out just fine. And then I ordered one off of Amazon this time. So I will put a link in the description for that as well as for the lights. The sensor is a banner sensor and I'll put the exact model number. You can find them on eBay. They run about $25 to $30. I think the lights were about $5. The wall where it was like maybe $10 or $11. So for really inexpensive, you can get a really great sensor. There's a Phillips style screw on the top of the sensor and by screwing that in or out, you can make the distance that it's gonna sense be further or closer together. I set it for about four inches on this one. On my big barrel, I have it set at like eight inches simply because it's just so heavy that I wanna actually empty it a little bit sooner. After checking it, I just wrapped everything tight with electrical tape. And then I pretty much just enjoy playing with my new toy. 
I recommend drilling your three quarter inch hole in before you get everything set up in there, but of course I wasn't thinking. So I'm just gonna drill from the bottom up and it worked totally fine. So a three quarter inch hole works out well um, to put the sensor in. You put the sensor in through the top and it has a little part that screws on on the bottom. I always stick just a little bit of uh, silicone around that as well, just to make sure that everything stays airtight. The main reason why this power strip has so many outlets is because it was the only one that I could find that had a long cord and I wanted that in case I do end up moving it around. Um, and it will be nice to have the extra outlets on that side of the garage. I printed off a logo on my vinyl cutter because, you know, why not? These LED lights fit really nicely into 8th inch Baltic birch, so I just drilled a hole, a 3 quarter inch hole, and are able to put the lights through. And so I just decided to keep it simple, and I'm just going to nail this to the front, add a piece of a 1x4 right behind it, and then do another piece on the back side of the post, so it just is going to form a simple little box. Alright, so this is where this is going to primarily live. Um, so I put the clamps that I use on a regular basis in front so I don't have to move it for those and I can pull it out a little bit if I need to get to the back ones. Easy to do because it's on wheels. But that's why I went with the 21 foot um, hose. Which is really nice because it collapses in just wonderfully so that it's not just dragging all over. This collapses down to three feet. But I'm gonna be able to get all the way across my shop with this. So I get all the way across my shop and I have a sweeper right here. So anything that falls off the drill press, I can just use to the sweeper if I want. But I am able to use this all around my shop because it does expand so long. But again, collapses really nice. Grip, I just have a nice on off switch. So if I'm not using it and I don't want to see the green light, I don't have to. All right, so I've got the dust from my bandsaw. And then I've got just general shop vac dust. So there's some, this is really fine powdery stuff. So we're gonna see what this weighs and then we're gonna try to suck it all up and see how much actually gets into the lower barrel. Two pounds, 10.7. Now, this really, really, really pains me to do. got the bench one. It's just, um, I just used the four inch port for it. All right, so that's what we have in the back bucket. So negligible amount got through. So we're not gonna include that in the weight. We just wanna see what we got in the main bucket. So I just kept this simple. You just have to remove the wedges. takes to remove it. So let's see if we can gently get this back into the bucket. Alright, I also want to 
to show you the dust sensor. See, that's when it turns red. I've got it set about four inches away. So when that barrel's almost full, it's going to light up red. And then suction effect provides enough of the rest. As you can see, everything got into the barrel. So. Woohoo, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for sticking around. If you're enjoying my work, please like and subscribe so you can follow along with my projects.